Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and this is the fourth video in a series of five videos which are here to help the parents of the children who have always struggled with primary maths know how to completely fix their children so they're going to be super confident with their maths and really enjoy it in the future. In this video we're going to focus on teaching the numbers to a hundred in ways that will lay really secure foundations for children's future maths. There are two big ideas in this episode. One is that children need to learn the linear structure of numbers to a hundred and we teach that generally with a bead string like this. And the second idea is that children need to be able to free count up to a hundred objects by grouping them into tens and seeing the structure of tens and ones when those tens are free and not in a line. But this is the most important structure. This bit of apparatus is really, really useful, not just for today's episode, but for other bits of maths learning that are still to come, that are so important that I made it intrinsic to my logo here. This is a spiralled string of maths beads. So if you're going to invest in anything, I would invest in one of these. You can get a single strand of beads from a company called TTS. They will normally deliver those to you for about five pounds, which is about six or seven euros or American dollars. Or you can get a similar bit of kit from other suppliers. It's simply a hundred beads laced and 50 of each of two colours in groups of 10. You can certainly make your own if you've got some beads. And if you can't do that, then I've posted a worksheet with some pictures of these on in my Facebook group, which is Expert Primary Maths Teaching. And you can download them from there. It's not as good, but it's the next best thing. The key reason why this bit of equipment is so important is that it teaches a structure of the numbers to a hundred that underpins children's thinking about number lines and underpins so much of their maths. And if they understand and can visualize this structure, they're going to be fluent and creative and confident with their maths. And if they can't see it and they can't use it, they're going to really struggle. Comes back to this question about dyscalculia again. Dyscalculia is not being able to see the structures of numbers that other people can see, whether they see it subconsciously or they're completely aware of what it is they can see. They've got it. And the people who are presenting with dyscalculia haven't got it and it can be fixed. We're gonna look at this structure now. So first of all, we want your children to start counting with their bead string. Let's explore what numbers they know. What numbers can they tell you? Well, they should be able to tell you the numbers up to 20 by now. Can they go past that? Are they getting it right? Can you work on that with them? Once we get past 20, there is a beautiful structure in the naming of numbers. All numbers are named as their number of tens and then their number of ones. Has your child noticed that? Do you need to practice the naming of the tens with them? If so, it's much more powerful to do that as you count 10, 20, 30, 40, as you say the numbers up and down, because your child can always see exactly what you're talking about. It's not just an abstract list of numbers that they're chanting with no real understanding. You're developing the understanding with the memorised knowledge of the number names. And then you want to mix up your numbers. If you pick a number, can your child name that number? If you say a number, can they show you that number with the bead string? If you show them a written number, can they show you that number on the bead string? If that's where they're getting stuck, then have you investigated dyslexia? Perhaps they're confusing the digit order Perhaps they're struggling to read that number rather than not knowing their numbers. I'm not going to cover dyslexia in this series because there are other people who are much better at it than I am. But it's something you should look out for because it can interfere with reading digits. Now you can still teach your child maths without them having to read digits. We can do the maths. They can become brilliant at maths, but that's going to need to be sorted at some stage. Now, once your child can recognize any number, you can start to count with them in fives, five, 
10, 15, and so on. Because they can see those numbers and they can see the fives going on and they understand what is happening and they're engaged with it. It's working for them, everything's clicking. And similarly, you can count in twos. And we've already counted in tens. Twos, fives and tens have wonderful structures that are clearly visible within this structure. Counting in other numbers doesn't work in that way. And if you're playing games with numbers up to 100, you can use this string to represent and compare the numbers involved in those games and you can use it to keep score. I just want to recommend this game. This is absolutely brilliant for children starting to work on their numbers to 100. It's for age six up and Matilda has a pile of books and she adds different numbers of books to the pile and it'll fall over it if it gets over 99 books high. And you can keep track of the height of the pile with this equipment. So the first half of the work on the numbers to 100 at this level is about playing around with and really learning this structure, which is laying the foundations for children's understanding of the number line. The second part is about counting up to 100 objects. We want children to do lots and lots of counting. You need to find lots of contexts in which things need to be counted. Oh, we're going to play a game. Can you just count the parts for me? Can you just count the number of knives in the cutlery drawer? Check how many we've got. We're just tidying out. Oh, we're going to play a card game. Can you just check there are 52 cards for me, please? And when children start counting, they struggle with their touch counting. They struggle to coordinate touching and saying numbers and stopping at the right time. And then, of course, there is a huge efficiency when they realise the benefit of gathering things into groups of 10 and counting the tens and the ones that are left over. That doesn't usually come instantly, it takes a while. The child needs to do what they're doing for as long as they need to do it before they can be nudged on to take the next step. It's why you're so brilliant to do this as a parent because you can just pick times when it just works for them to have a go. Certainly recommend if you've got Lego or Duplo blocks that are all the same size, they're great to count. Can your child sort their Lego or Duplo into different types of brick and then count them? It's particularly great because every 10 is going to be the same size. It's going to be really easy to see and compare your 10s. And as your child works in this way, they're laying the foundations to work with 10s and 1s and then hundreds, 10s and 1s. All that will come much more easily if they've done this foundational work and if they've really understood it. Hopefully as you work on these ideas with your child, everything will pop into place pretty quickly. But if you're struggling with counting up to 100 objects and you want some more ideas on that, here's a link to a video that I made for teachers that will give you some more ideas and tell you about some really fun apparatus that's great for supporting children who are struggling with this. So your takeaways from this video are that if you name a number up to 100, your child should be able to show you it on the bead string. If you show them some beads, they should be able to name that number quite quickly. If you show them a number up to 100 shown with digits, they should be able to show you that number. And they should be able to count up to 100 objects by grouping those objects into tens as far as they possibly can. That's it for this video. Only one more to go in this series. You're doing really well, stick with it. This will make such a difference to your child. Lots of people think that if their child is struggling, it's best to send them to a tutor. It really isn't. It's much better if you can take this journey with them because it fits into the odd moments and it's a shared journey between you and them and that will give them so much more confidence for the future. And it's usually much more efficient and much quicker for the parent to work with the child. And of course it's more rewarding as well as being much cheaper. If you've got any questions, please do post them in the comments to this YouTube video. Please subscribe to the channel, click on the bell so you get notifications. If I get over 100 subscribers, I will live stream and you'll be able to ask me questions in real time. If you'd love other parents to benefit from this too, please do share these videos into your social media groups or tell your friends about them. We want to fix as many kids as we possibly can so that they love their maths, they're great at maths, they understand the world through the eyes of maths, and their self-confidence is much higher because they're confident with their maths. 
I hope to see you back for the final video in this series, which is all about consolidating children's understanding of maths across the whole of maths at this level. Bye for now.